We're going, we're rolling. Welcome to your circus days, circus assembly. I am Phil, I've got it written here in case you forget. And I am a circus instructor. An instructor, that's like a teacher, but way cooler. We're going to teach you some different circus tricks. Then later on today, you're going to join me with your class and get to try lots and lots of different things for yourselves. So while I'm teaching them to you now, listen really carefully, try and remember as much as you can. So when you come in to join me, you'll know how to do all the different things and you'll have seen them before. So the first thing I'm going to show you now is scarf juggling. We use scarves because they float slowly through the air, so they're much easier to catch and throw than a big heavy scarf. So it's easier to start learning. I've chosen pink because pink is my favorite color. I like pink because it matches my Barbie dolls, my princess dress, and my favorite pair of underpants. This is a scarf for juggling with. It's not a scarf like old ladies wear on their heads. The first thing you need to do when you have a scarf is find the middle. The middle is where my nose is. The easy way to find the middle is to put the scarf on your head and find the middle of your head and then pull the scarf off your head. If you try that, be very, very careful that you do not accidentally pull your head off by mistake. I don't want to see anyone's head falling off and bouncing across the floor. When you're holding the middle of the scarf, the first thing to try is waving the scarf. You can wave it up and down. You can wave it side to side. You can wave it round and round in a circle. You can wave it around your head like a helicopter. And the other hand, up and down, side to side, round and round, around your head like a smelly copter. A smelly copter is like a helicopter, but more smelly. When you can wave the scarf really good, you can try and throw it. You can throw it as high as you can and let it float all the way down to the ground. Have a few tries, see how high you can make the scarf go. When you get good at throwing it, you need to learn to catch a scarf. There's a special way to catch a scarf. You make your hand like a claw, like a tiger's claw or a cat's claw, and you grab the scarf from above. Up, float, grab. Up, float, grab. Up, float, grab with the other hand. Up, float, grab. Up, clap, grab. Two claps. Three claps. A million claps. When you get really good at clapping, you can do heads. Head, shoulders. Head, shoulders, knees. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. And the last one with one scarf. Head, shoulders, knees, toes, turn around, catch the scarf. Yes! When you can do one scarf, you can then move on to two. Hold them somewhere near the middle. You can wave them up and down. You can wave them side to side. You can wave them round and round, around your head like a twin propellered smelly copter. You can do Morris dancing. You can throw them so they float alongside each other with a gap between them and catch them both from above with your hands like claws. Up, float, grab. Try and throw them so they're both about the same height with a gap between them and catch them both around about the same time from above with your hands like claws. See if you can clap while you're doing that. Wave your hand in the gap. Hello. 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 Heads, head, shoulders, head, shoulders, knees, head, shoulders, knees and toes. And the last one, head, shoulders, knees, toes, turn around, grab them both. <gasps> the other way to do two scarves is throw one scarf first. Wait for it to start coming down and then throw the other one. One, then the other, one, then the other. By grabbing them from above with your hand like a claw, it's possible to keep them going with just one hand, with the other hand behind your back. If you try to do this, don't try pushing them or hitting them in the air, because then they get stuck on your fingers and it's really hard and really tricky. So the best way to do it is to remember to grab from above with your hand like a claw, whoops, and see if you can throw them side by side. That's a bit more difficult, not everyone can do that, but have a try if you want to. The last thing with the scarves, Three scarves. A good way to start learning three scarves is to kneel down on the floor. Put the scarves in a line in front of you. One, two, three. You don't have to open them out, just leave them as they land. And you're kneeling behind the middle scarf. Put your hand on the middle scarf. 
Throw it in the air, let it float back to the ground. Hands on the outside too, let them float back to the ground. And then when you can do that, see if you can maybe keep it going. Outside two, middle one. Outside two, middle one. You don't have to catch them. You can just pick them up as they land on the floor and throw them back up again. That's the whole reason we're doing it kneeling on the floor, is so you don't have to actually catch them. So it makes it a bit easier to learn the pattern as you're doing it. Outside two, middle one. You want to be throwing the next one before the other ones come down, as the other ones are kind of at the top. If you can do it kneeling down, you can try it standing up. A good way to start is to put one under your chin. You throw the outside two, and then when they're in the air, grab the one from your chin and throw it in the middle. So that's the first thing to try. If you can do that, maybe you can catch them. Outside two, middle one. Oops, missed. Try again. Outside two, middle one. If you can do that, maybe you can keep it going a bit longer. Outside two, middle one, outside two, middle one, outside two, middle one, and eventually, with a bit of practice, you'll be able to keep it going for a very, very long time. So that's how we learn to do the scarf juggling, first of all. One more thing with the scarves. Sometimes when the scarf's juggling, they get left on the floor. If that happens, people might step on them and slip and hurt themselves. So do not leave the scarves on the floor unless you're actually juggling them. And if you see any scarves left on the floor or they fall out of the box or whatever, make sure you pick them up, put them back in the box so no one else will slip and hurt themselves with the scarves. Scarf juggling. The next thing to show you is a peacock feather. This is a feather from a bird called a peacock. They walk around with these feathers poking out of their bottoms all day long. And then when they grow really long, they fall out onto the floor and the peacock farmer picks them up and sells them to me. We use these for balancing. Because they're very long and very light, it is quite easy to balance a feather. The secret is you look at the top. If you can see, it looks like an eye. If on the feather you have, you can't see the eye, that's just that you're looking at the back. Doesn't matter which way, so long as you're looking at the top, you put it in the middle of your flat hand, then if the feather moves forward, you move forwards. If the feather moves backwards, you move backwards. If it moves sideways, you move sideways. Whichever way the top of that feather falls, follow it, and you can keep it standing up on your hand. With practice, you can move it really, really small amounts, so it hardly moves at all. If you can do it on your hand, Try the end of your finger, try the back of your hand, try the other hand, looking at the top, moving your hand whichever way the feather falls. You can do it on your face by tilting your whole head back and looking at the top of the feather. So put it on my chin, looking at the top of the feather, and then I move my whole body whichever way the feather falls, staring at the top and moving my whole body or on my forehead, staring at the top, moving my whole body. You can't do it here, because if you do it here, you can't see the feather. So it may stay there for a little while, but you can't keep it balanced for a long time. Try to keep it away from your eyes, because you don't want to poke you in the eye. So that, for that reason, I don't recommend doing it on your nose. So do it on your forehead, away from your eyes, or on your chin. Don't try and cheat by putting it in your mouth because these are real peacock feathers from a real peacock's bottom. You do not want to be putting that in your mouth. One more thing to tell you, the peacock feathers are very, very fragile. That means they break very easily. So when you have one of these, please handle it gently, delicately and carefully. Don't poke or tickle people with it. No sword fighting, no javelin throwing. If you do that, the feather can snap, the white bit can snap, and then it goes all floppy. And if it goes floppy, then it can't actually be repaired, and then no one else will be able to use it. If it breaks by accident, that's okay. Just come and tell me, we can get you another one. But we don't want it breaking with people being silly or tickling each other. So handle them gently and carefully. Before we finish the feather, if you practice lots, it is possible balancing the feather either on your hand, your forehead or your chin to maybe kneel down and maybe stand up with or sit down or even lie down with the feather balanced and then all the way back up uh, 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 uh. 
And that's the peacock feather balancing. These are spinning plates. These are special plastic plates, especially made for spinning. If you drop them on the floor, they will not break. That's why we use the special plastic plates. And there's some sticks. There's different types of sticks. Some have got a black pointy end, some have got a white pointy end. Some it looks like there's no end and it's just shaved with a pencil sharpener. That's okay, you can use them as well, so long as there is some sort of pointy end on it. When you use it, you make sure the pointy end is at the top and then you balance the plate on top of the pointy end. There's three ways to spin a plate. The first way, balance it on top and just push it with your finger. At first, you can balance it and push it really, really gently. Push it really gently and then the faster it's going, the harder you can hit it and the faster you can make it go. And it's possible to make it go really, really fast this way by hitting it with your finger. It's a bit like when a basketball player spins a basketball on their finger and speeds it up by hitting it with their hand. That's one way. The other way, the spider jam jar method. Put your hand on top of the plate like a spider. Turn your hand like you're screwing the top on a jam jar. And that way makes it go quite fast. With that way, you just tend to spin it once and then just hold the stick and let it keep spinning. And if you had a good spin, it will just keep spinning for ages all by itself. So the spider jam jar is method number two. The last way. This way is very tricky. Most people cannot do this the first day they try. Even grown adults and teachers usually cannot do it the first day they try. But you might like to give it a go, especially the older ones of you. You put the end of the stick in the middle of your hand. Close your hand around the end of the stick with your finger pointing up the stick. Hold your arm in an L shape, like a strong man or a strong lady. And you put the plate on top like a lollipop. With the plate on top like a lollipop, you then move the end of the stick around and round in little circles, holding the very bottom of the stick, keeping your arm still, just moving your hand at the wrist. If you do that with a plate on top like this, first of all, the plate goes around the stick. You go a little bit faster and the plate looks like it's floating. It looks like it's floating like a flying saucer. If it's going fast enough, keep your arm still, just move your hand at the wrist, hold the very bottom of the plate, if it's going fast and floating in space, stop moving the stick suddenly and it will go to the middle by itself and spin really, really fast. Once again, this way is quite hard. Most people cannot do it the first day they try. But have a go if you want to. Arm in an L shape. Keep your hand, arm still. Just move your hand at the wrist so the end of the stick goes in circles. And when it's spinning fast, stop moving the stick. It should go to the bottom, middle. Whichever way you spin the stick, Spin the plate, it's possible to do little hops. If you do a little hop, move the stick down a little bit when you catch it. That makes it more easy to catch. Cushion the catch a little bit. Or you could spin it on your finger. I'm actually spinning on the back of my nail rather than the end of my finger because that's smoother and so there's less friction so it'll spin for longer. Less friction, it will spin longer. Um, it's also possible to balance the plate and the stick like we just did with a feather, but that's a lot more tricky. So you can balance it on your hand, looking at the top of the stick, or even on your face. Oh. One more thing. Don't walk around waving these sticks about. If you do that, someone might get hurt by the pointy end of the stick. So when you have a plate and a stick, you hold the plate in one hand, you hold the stick by your leg, and you walk with the stick alongside your leg until you get to a space, and only when you're in a space do you hold it up in the air. We borrowed this from an archery where they have bows and arrows, and they hold the arrow by their legs, so no one get hurt by the pointy end. So hold it by your leg until you get to a space, and then when you're in a space, put it up and have a go at doing the plate spinning. Scarf juggling, plate spinning and peacock feather balancing. Hopefully everybody, if there's time, will get to try all those different things. And the tight wire, which I will show you later. The older ones of you also, when you, if there's time, we're gonna have free practice, where you get to try lots and lots of different things on your own. Now, I'm not gonna have time to teach you how to use these again later, so you're gonna have to make sure you listen and concentrate really carefully in this assembly, so when you come in, you know how to use the different activities from the free practice session at the end of your circus workshop. This is an easy one. It's a dancing ribbon. 
a gymnastic ribbon. We used to call these Chinese ribbons. If you go see in the Olympics, the rhythmic gymnasts have ribbons like this. You can do circles, you can do big circles, you can go around your head, you can dance in circles. As you can see, I am a very good dancer. I've been practicing lots. Um, when you're doing this, if you're dancing about, make sure you don't get in other people's way. You don't want to whip other people in the face or hit them with a the stick, so be aware of other people. Also, while you're using it, often it does get knots in it by mistake. If it gets knots in it, stop straight away if you can and try and undo the knots. Otherwise, the knots get really, really tight and really, really hard to undo. And when you finish with a dabbler, please make sure you put it back with no knots so it's ready for the next person to use. Not with the diabolo, it's not a diabolo, is it? When you've finished with the ribbon, Make sure you put it back carefully. The Diabolo, that's the next thing. The Diabolo. There's a string tied between two sticks. This is the Diabolo. It looks like a big egg cup. It goes on top like this. We'll move the plate out of the way. The idea is then you have to try and get it spinning. Keep your feet still, do not move your feet. Roll it along the floor to the one side as far as you can reach. I go into the right and then roll it back and that starts it spinning just a little bit. Roll it once again out to the side slowly and then when you roll it back, pick it up when it's in front of your feet. To make it go faster, you hold the left stick still, wiggle the right stick up and down like you're hitting a drum with the, left, with the right stick. You don't do this, if you do that, that won't make it go faster. You hold one stick still and wiggle the other stick up and down. That's how you do it if you're right-handed and you write with your right hand. If, like me, you are left-handed, you do the same thing, but you go the other way and wiggle with your left hand. So you put it on top, roll to the left, roll back, and then you wiggle with your left hand. And then the faster you can get it, if you get it going fast enough, it's possible to make it go really high in the air. So you try that again. Really high in the air. Hop, whoop. One more thing I have to tell you, the Diabolo. When you use it, often gets twisted and tangled. It might get knots in it. If you do that, do not keep going. Otherwise, the knots and twists get worse and worse. Stop straight away and try and undo the knots. Usually, if you put the Diabolo on the floor, and then you can untie the knots and pull the string off, or hold the Diabolo, and then see if you can just pull the string off. And once you pull the string off, all the knots and twists usually just come undone by themselves. So that's an easy way to do it. If it's twisted, either put the Diabolo on the floor, like this, and see if you can get the string off, or hold the string, hold the stick, the Diabolo, and pull the stick, sticks and string off, like that. Once you've finished with the Diabolo, please make sure you put the sticks and strings back properly. You put the sticks together with the string at one end. Make sure there's no knots in it and wrap both the string around both sticks. Until there's just a little bit left, tuck that bit between the sticks and pull. Once again, when you finish with the Diabolo, make sure you put the sticks and strings back properly. You put the sticks together with the string at one end. Wrap the string around both sticks until there's just a little bit left. Tuck that bit between the sticks and pull. Please, please, please make sure you do that. If you put it back without wrapping the string up, all the sticks and strings get tangled up with each other. We end up with a really big mess that no one can undo. So do that when you've finished with them. What have we got left to show you? Stilts. These are the easy ones. We've got some buckets and some strings. You can stand on them and you get to be a little bit taller. Whoop. There you go. You can figure them out, they're easy. These ones are a bit more tricky. Wooden stilts. There's two sorts. There's these really small ones with round handles, or these big ones with square handles. Make sure you get two the same. If you have two different ones, that doesn't work. If you're trying the stilts, a good idea is to start with your bottom or your back against a wall. Lean against the wall with the stilts quite close to them. Stand up tall and straight. I prefer to have my arms straight with my fingers behind and my thumbs in front. Some people kind of do it like this, that's possible, but I prefer to do it with my arms straight. You need to keep your legs straight, you need to look straight ahead and stand really tall like a soldier. Keep moving your feet. If you keep moving your feet, that's how you balance. Keep moving your feet really small amounts, don't stop moving. If you stop moving, 
you will fall. Also, don't try and do it with your knees bent and your legs bent and your back bent, staring at the floor, because that's really, really difficult. And you look like you're going to the toilet. It's not a good look. I have these. These are the pedals. There's two pedals, four wheels. You can pedal forwards. You can pedal backwards. You can't turn, you can only go forwards and backwards. Make sure you don't pedal into anyone or hit anyone, especially if you're going backwards. Grown-ups can't go on these. Teachers, you're not allowed because you're too heavy. You might break them just for children, these. If you try these, one thing that's very important, you have to have somebody holding your hand. You have to work in pairs. You have to find a friend to hold your hand when you're on the pedals. Sometimes when people try it, as soon as it starts moving forwards, they accidentally fall backwards and they might land on their feet or on their bottom. So when you're doing it, put it on the floor, put your foot on the bottom pedal first, find a friend to hold your hand, and then see if you can pedal on the pedals holding your friend's hand. And then it's only fair, once they've had a go, swap over so you can hold their hand and they can have a go on the pedals as well. And when you finish with the pedals, please make sure you put it back properly. Put it back with the others, don't leave it on the floor for other people to trip up on. So those are most of the different things that we're going to try in the circus workshop. One more thing to show you now. The last thing we're going to get to try in the circus workshop is the tight wire. Ta-da! This is it, the tight wire. Everybody who wants to is going to get to have a try at this. Now, it's not scary or dangerous because there's going to be people to help you. If you're quite small, there'll be two people to help you. I might stand on one side and a teacher stand on the other side so you can't fall and you can't hurt yourself. If you're using the tight wire, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're sitting down nicely, lining up, waiting to have a go. So we'll put a bench here and you sit down, sitting on the bench, waiting till it's your go, lining up nicely. When we say we're ready for you, you need to put both feet on the floor. Keep both feet on the floor until I'm holding your hand. And then when I'm holding your hand, step up carefully onto the tight wire and stand up straight. I need someone to help and hold my hand. Could you hold my hand, please? You get to pretend to be me, you lucky person. So if you stand there just behind the tight wire, I'm going to pretend to be one of the children. So stay sitting down till I say I'm ready for you. Keep both feet on the floor. You pretend to be me. I'll pretend to be one of the children. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. That's horrible. Don't, uh, sorry, sorry, it's disgusting. Anyway, excuse me. I have now cleaned my hand. <laughs> We're going to try balancing on the tight wire. Both feet on the floor until I'm holding your hand. When you're on the tight wire, stand up tall and straight. Point your feet along the wire so your toe and your heel touch the wire and you have straight, pointy feet. Like a ballet dancer or a gymnast, pointing your feet, looking straight ahead. Try and find a point. I'm looking out the door, staring straight ahead. Standing tall and straight like a soldier on parade. When you get to the other end, step off carefully and safely. Don't do a big jump where you might fall and hurt yourself. Just step off carefully. Thank you for my helper. Thank you. Once again, stay sitting down nicely until we say we are ready for you, lining up. Keep both feet on the floor until I say I'm ready for you and holding your hand. When I'm holding your hand, stand on the tight wire. You're only allowed to do the tight wire if there's someone next to you holding your hand. Even if you're a little bit older, people could fall and hurt themselves. I have to have special insurance to be allowed to use the tight wire. And the insurance says that you have to have someone holding your hand. It's not my rule, it's the rule of the insurance. So even if you're older, you don't have to lean on me or put any weight on me, but you do have to have me there. Not a teacher, it does need to be me standing next to you holding your hand. So once again, on the tight wire, holding my hand. You can have someone else on the other side if you need it. Stand tall and straight, point your feet. Whoop. Then when you get to the other end, step off carefully and safely. And that's the tight wire. So before we go, I thought it'd be really good to teach you the sort of thing you could do if you keep practicing circus skills for years and years and years and years and years. 
This isn't something you'll be able to do today because this takes lots and lots of practice, but I thought you might like to see it. I've got a hula hoop, I've got a big ball, I've got a stick for some balancing, I've got some juggling rings, I've got some, oh, these are noisy plates. These are much noisier than the plastic ones you get to try today. We're going to try and do all these different things together at the same time. So first of all, plate number one, we'll spin it on the end of the stick. That's the first plate. That's the second plate. There's a third plate. And then the last one goes in the middle. Whoop, like that. And then I'm gonna try and see if I can balance this whole thing on my chin. Wish me luck. It's on the chin. Now we're going to add the hula hoop and the rest of the trick. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here we go. That last plate's almost stopped spinning. We got that just in time. There's one, two, three, four plates. And that's my incredibly difficult circus trick. Hooray for me. Thank you.